Hello, I'm Ed Hyland with ASA TV, and it's been a great few days here at Anesthesiology 2014 in New Orleans. We continue this five-day extravaganza with more education, poster presentations, and the Connection Center. Day three of the annual meeting has been a busy one. We begin today by exploring the show floor. Many of the technologies seen here are currently in market and some are new to the industry. Sticking with the disruptive innovation theme of the opening session, physician anesthesiologists share many ideas on the floor dealing with change and how to maximize patient safety. The Connection Center has been jam-packed with conversation, business, and new products. Let's take a look at some of the innovations. There's wall-to-wall -wall coverage of technology, including the new product showcase. We are seeing everything from single-use video scopes, new ultrasound systems, to portable anesthesia machines. I think it's really exciting just walking around the exhibit hall here, just seeing the changes. I'm really excited for anesthesia with the ultrasound and uh, all the stuff we're doing with airway. I can't, I'm just going over to the store's uh, booth over there because they have some new technology with the fiber optic. So for me, that's exciting because it's something new. It's going to change the way we intubate, change the way we're going to take care of patients. So I'm excited about that. There are even live presentations of how to use the equipment. Attendees can experience a practical examination of the processes involved. You name it, and it's probably on the show floor. This is actually my first time coming to ASA as a student, so we've actually gone to see a lot of new technologies with um, what we're using and whatnot every day in, in the classroom. But what's also been really neat is a lot of the vendors have taught us you know, how to use some of the technology that we haven't gotten to use yet, such as the ultrasound machine, doing regional blocks and things like that. You know, I've been through here a little bit each day and I'm uh, enjoying the opportunity to get some different hands-on experience uh, with airways, other access devices, and, and learn about some new technologies. Also on the show floor today, Baxter presented a check to the APSF with their photo booth program, All for Charity. They donated $20 for every person who took a photo at their booth. Participating in a similar program, Teleflex presented Dr. Hanneberg with a check for the Lifebox charity that saves lives through safer surgery. We're wrapping up day three in the Connection Center. We now go to education sessions for more. Despite the humorous session title, The Strain of Pain Lies Mainly in the Brain, focused on the serious subject of pain management. Dr. Sean McKee says pain affects up to 100 million Americans. McKee, who is president of the American Academy of Pain Medicine, says physicians must do a better job of easing fear and anxiety for pain relief, and research demands objective pain biomarkers. There are clearly situations uh, that we as anesthesiologists deal with where a person's not able to report whether they're in pain or not. And so let's just take a look at the intensive care unit as an example. We see somebody who's writhing in the intensive care unit. Do we know if they're in pain? Are they delirious? Is it something else? The idea of having an objective biomarker could be very, very useful. It was a full house for the Rovenstein Lecture, Healthcare at the Crossroads. Speakers agreed the healthcare model in the United States is not sustainable. In the future, the healthcare system will embrace perioperative care that is organized, physician-led, team-based, and driven by quality and cost containment. Attendees know there are challenges to reaching that goal. We accept that there is a limit on what can be afforded, and I think that, that, was, that was the main purpose of this talk and our ability, you know, our ability to adapt and to adjust to changing circumstances and to basically optimize the quality of healthcare we provide within the resources that are available to us. Weapons of mass destruction, it's a real threat in our modern age. Following the Boston bombing, we got a look into the mechanics of how IEDs affect the body and Dr. McMurray gave us insight into the role of the physician anesthesiologist in managing blast casualties. The primary blast injuries are typically in the ear, lung, and gut. Combined blast injuries include secondary and tertiary injuries with burns, toxic exposure, and radiation. He says the best way to prepare for these injuries are to warm the room and the patient, damage control resuscitation, limit the volume of crystalloid, create a checklist of vitals, and predict whether or not the patient is a candidate for massive transfusion. Much of what you see here at the Anesthesiology 2014 annual meeting could not have been possible without our industry and ASA annual meeting supporters. 
we'd like to thank you for your contributions and continued support. Baxter, Teleflex, Farmedium, Haspira, Massimo, Edwards, Covidian, Annual meeting supporters include Acel RX Pharmaceuticals, Surgical Information Systems, Merck, Optum Clinical Solutions, BD, Team Health Anesthesia, Mind Ray, Cheetah Medical. We thank you for joining us on ASA TV. Check back with us tomorrow for more highlights from the Connection Center, sessions, and workshops. I'm Ed Hyland. Thanks for watching.